Welcome to the second chapter of this course. During this chapter, we will be examining the settings that are required to complete the integration between S4 HANA and Extended Warehouse Management. The main selling point of the embedded EWM is that this module is fully integrated with the core S4 and the same transactional and master data can be used by both S4 and EWM. But as I have mentioned during our introduction session, you still need to maintain some basic integration settings between S4 and EWM even when we are using embedded EWM. This chapter is divided into two lessons. In the first lesson, we will be examining basic system setup related to RFC settings. These settings are required for the connection between S4 HANA and embedded EWM to work. In the second lesson, we will be examining delivery document integration settings and discussing how to create a distribution model in S4 HANA that is distributing delivery documents to EWM. If you are a business user mostly interested in the actual functionalities of the EWM module and don't really care about the technical integration settings, please feel free to skip the first lesson of this chapter. These mandatory settings are most likely already maintained in the training environment you are using, so there is no need to make any new settings. But if you want to have a full understanding of the integration between S4 and EWM, I strongly recommend you to check also this lesson. Even if you decide to skip the first lesson, it's very important that you will still watch the second lesson of this chapter. Generating a distribution model for your S4 warehouse is a mandatory step, so be sure not to miss this. Without further introductions, let's start the actual lessons of this chapter. After this chapter, we will start examining the actual organization structures and settings in EWM, and I promise that the next chapter will be much more interesting than this chapter. In this lesson, we will examine how to set up queued remove function call connections between S4 HANA and Extended Warehouse Management. All the transactional data between S4 and EWM will be moved through these RFC connections. We will start by quickly going through the mandatory RFC settings from S4 HANA client side. If you are currently using any existing sandbox or training environment, these settings have already been maintained and you most probably don't need to maintain anything new. As I mentioned before, you only need to watch this lesson if you are interested to get the full picture how the integration between S4 and EWM is working. In this slide, you can see the settings you need to maintain from S4 HANA side. The first thing you need to do is to define RFC destination. Let's open the system and go to transaction SM59 to have a look at the destination available in the environment that I'm currently using. Inside the first folder, we can see that the RFC destination for the client that I'm currently using has already been created. Next, we need to define the logical system for our S4 HANA client. I go to transaction BD54. Here you can see the logical system for my S4 system. In addition to this, we need to create a dummy logical system for the embedded EWM module. If we are using decentralized EWM, we need to create an actual logical system for the decentralized EWM system we are connecting with. Here is the dummy system for the embedded EWM I'm using. The next step is to link the logical system created in the previous step with our S4 HANA system. There is no transaction code available, so we need to navigate to the correct transaction using the IMG configuration path. I start by opening the SAP NetWeaver menu and keep going further down until I can find Assign Logical System to a Client. After double-clicking the client I'm using, I can see that a logical system has been assigned for it. Next. We need to set up RFC destination for method calls. I go to transaction BD97.
As you can see, RFC destination of the embedded EWM system has been assigned as the RFC destination in the S4 HANA system. Next, we need to define the queues in S4 for the transfer of data to the embedded EWM. Again, we need to navigate to the relevant transaction using the configuration path. I start navigating the menus from Logistics Execution. Under Extended Warehouse Management Integration, we can find Define Queue for Transfer to SAP EWM. Here you can see the queue settings defined for the S4 client I'm using. The final step is to set up Queue Out and Queue In schedulers. This step is needed to schedule the automated processing of inbound and outbound queues in S4. I open transaction SMQS. You can see our S4 system maintained here. These are the RFC settings that must be maintained from the S4 HANA system side. As I said before, the settings are most likely already maintained in the environment you are using so instead of maintaining new settings, you can just confirm that all settings have been done correctly. Next, we will examine the integration settings between S4 and EWM from the EWM module side. You can see the steps that are required from this slide. The first step is to define a business system in EWM. Let's open the related transaction by locating it from the configuration menu. Define your own business system configuration transaction can be found under SCM Extended Warehouse Management, then Interfaces, then ERP Integration, and then General Settings. You can see that a business system has already been defined. This business system represents the S4 system. We also need to link the S4 logical system with this business system. This can be done using the Define Business System config transaction. This is the logical system of the S4 clients I'm using. Next, we need to maintain a business system group. I minimize the Extended Warehouse Management menu path and open SCM Basis menu. From this menu, I select Integration, then Basic Settings for Creating System Landscape, and then Maintain Business System Group. We can see our Business System Group available here. In the next step, we need to assign the logical system of the S4 to the Business System Group and also define a queue type for the mapping. I go back to the configuration menu and then select Assign Logical System and Queue Type. You can see that mapping between Business System Group and Logical System has been maintained here. The last configuration step is to define the RFC queue control settings for the messages between EWM and S4. I go back to the Extended Warehouse Management configuration menu. I select Interfaces, then ERP Integration, then General Settings, and finally, Control for RFC queue. Here you can see the settings maintained for the business system we have examined earlier. These are all the mandatory integration-related settings from the EWM side. In the next lesson, we start examining delivery document-related integration settings and how to generate a distribution model in S4 HANA.